Flying a drone capable of going 40 miles per hour indoors may seem counterintuitive. However, drones remain versatile tools for capturing creative shots for a variety of applications, and flying indoors is no exception. While it may seem risky and adventurous, indoor flying can add another level to your filmmaking capabilities and be beneficial for a variety of projects. It turns out drones are great for showing off the construction of new buildings, the operation of equipment or machinery, or even just the interior of a large facility. They are also great for residential real estate, opening up the opportunity for cool new shots such as transitioning from indoors to outdoors. In this video, we are going over the 7 best drone settings specifically for flying indoors. These settings will help you stay safe, avoid crashing, and capture the best footage possible. While smaller drones like the Spark, Mavic Air, and Mavic Pro do tend to be better for flying indoors just because they are smaller, these settings do apply to all DJI drones and are configured within the DJI GO application. First, you want to change what happens if the drone disconnects from the controller. There's much more interference when you're flying indoors from concrete walls, metal equipment or machinery, and wireless frequencies. This means your drone is more likely to disconnect from your controller, and in the event of this happening, you want to make sure your drone doesn't attempt to land in an unsafe location or try to return to home and crash into the ceiling. To change this setting, what you want to do is tap on the drone icon on the main screen to jump into the main controller settings, scroll down to advanced settings, and then scroll down again to see the remote controller signal loss setting. Here you can see there are three options, return to home, landing, and hover. You want to select hover to keep your drone as safe as possible. This will prevent it from landing in an unsafe environment or from trying to return home and crashing into the ceiling. The second setting we want to change is what happens if the drone runs low on battery. Tap the battery icon and make sure smart return to home is turned off. This would normally make it so your aircraft would return to home when the remaining battery was just enough to return to home safely. But again, we don't want that happening because we are flying indoors and the drone would crash into the ceiling. The next few settings are in the visual navigation tab. So setting three is to turn off obstacle avoidance. This may seem counterintuitive, but we found from our testing, the system would trigger too easily and actually prevent the drone from moving. This prohibits the drone from performing more advanced shots, like coming around a corner or flying through a doorway, which is why we recommend leaving this setting turned off. You are welcome to leave it on for additional safety or assurance, just know it may limit your flying capabilities. Number four is to turn on display radar chart. Even though obstacle avoidance is turned off, you can still get a visual display on your screen of how close your drone is to an obstacle while flying. This is by no means something to rely fully on, but we found it helpful to gauge how close your drone is to an obstacle and just as a visual indicator as when you may need to exercise more caution. Setting 5 is to go into advanced settings and make sure vision positioning is turned on. What this does is it uses the downward facing ultrasonic and monocular sensors to help the drone maintain its position even if it loses GPS signal. We found this to be extremely helpful for keeping the drone in its same position, especially when flying indoors, but there is an important caveat with this setting you do need to be aware of. The big caveat with the vision positioning system is it also makes the drone maintain the same height above the ground even if it flies over something. For example, if you are flying 6 feet above the ground and fly over a 5 foot high table, your drone will gain altitude so it is 6 feet above the table and 11 feet above the ground. If you're in an area with 10 foot high ceilings, this is a problem because your drone will crash into the ceiling. So definitely be mindful of this behavior when using vision positioning. Again, we found it extremely helpful for helping the drone maintain its position, but if you're going to be flying over a lot of obstacles of various heights, you may consider leaving this setting turned off just to prevent the drone from automatically ascending and descending as it flies over these obstacles. Setting 6 is to adjust the control sensitivities. Tap the drone icon again, scroll down to advanced, and here we are going to focus on EXP or EXPO and the sensitivity. First, in EXPO, what you want to do is set all the values to 0.1. You can quickly do this by dragging the upper part of the graph towards the bottom right or by manually entering the values in the boxes below. Basically, what this does is it changes the relationship between the physical stick input and the logic output. 
What this means is as you move the sticks slightly and they stay towards the center, the movement will be interpreted for more gradual output in the drone, helping the drone move a lot slower in a more controlled way. Next, we can jump back and go into sensitivity. You can actually leave most of these settings at their defaults, however I want to cover what each one means in case you wanted to change them and get different behavior from your drone. First, attitude is how aggressively the drone reacts to your input. If you wanted less aggressive reactions, you can consider turning this down. However, with the adjustments we made to the expo settings, we found leaving this at 100 was totally fine. Next is brake. Brake is how quickly the drone reacts when you let go of the controls, how quickly the drone brings itself to a stop. We recommend leaving this at its default value or even turning it up a little bit so your drone brings itself to a stop a little bit quicker when flying indoors, helping to prevent it from crashing. And lastly, yaw movement is how sensitive the drone is when rotating left or right. A lower value can help you get slower, smoother panning shots, which can be really nice. However, this setting is ultimately up to you and what kind of footage you are looking for. And lastly, setting 7 is to adjust the multiple flight modes option. Tap the back arrow and scroll up to find this setting, and my recommendation is actually going to vary depending on which drone you have. On Spark, Mavic Pro, and Mavic Air, I suggest leaving multiple flight modes turned off. You don't want to accidentally find yourself in sport mode with sensitive controls and fast movements, especially with how easy it is to hit that switch on the side of the Mavic Pro controller. On the Phantom 4 series of drones, I actually suggest you leave multiple flight modes turned on and use A mode or attitude mode when flying indoors. This disables GPS and uses the barometer for controlling the altitude, and this also allows the Phantom to move in a smooth and natural way for finer control. You do have to remember to manually brake though, as the drone will drift in the direction it was last moving. Be mindful of air conditioning vents, open windows, and even the air from the drone's propellers called prop wash, which can send your drone drifting in new directions. So those are the seven best settings and options to configure for flying indoors. These will help you maintain control of your drone, stay safe, avoid crashing, and get the smoothest footage possible. Be sure to stay tuned for our second video where we cover nine additional tips for flying indoors. These include things like the best intelligent flight modes to use, what to consider before you take off and while you're airborne, and one neat trick nobody seems to be talking about. Anyway, that wraps up this video. Give it a thumbs up if you found it helpful, and subscribe for more videos like this one. I'm Stetson with Drone Genuity. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.